an eye opener. COVID for me was something I needed in my life because I feel like without COVID, I'm not going to be the person that I am. It shaped me into a different person and it helped me like see the world in another way, see the world in a different lens, different from the one I usually see the world with. <laughs> Our topic for today is what did you learn from COVID-19? I'm going to share all the responses. I don't think I'd, I want to respond to them individually today. I want to talk about my own experiences with COVID. I'm only going to read to you guys. I'll read everything and then I'll talk about COVID based on my own experience because I feel it's going to be more fun like that. So we have the responses. The first person said, Sobo. No condition is permanent. The second person said, anything can happen at any F time. <laughs> then the next person said, our life can change in an instant and to always be grateful. Next person said, I learned how precious life is. It really helped build a very good relationship with Allah. Potential of the online world is wild. That I love my space. Me, I didn't learn anything to be honest. I didn't even believe it existed. Wow. The next person said life happens. Then the next person said life is so unpredictable. And we as humans are more powerless than we think. We thank God. Then life is too short and people can be very careless. So stay safe. An infectious disease. It taught me the usefulness of family bonding. The longest I have stayed with my family since primary school. COVID for me was spontaneous. I remember us being in class and we got a link to Zoom. And we were shared a link to download Zoom. And our teacher was telling us, you should download Zoom. Your classes are going to start happening. I'm like, what is Zoom? Because I was asking my friend, I was like, do you know what Zoom is? She said, I don't know, Fatima. But let us ask. And then we asked one of our classmates and the guy said, oh, it is a platform that you can do video calls and you can even take classes there. And she said, your classes are going to be online for a week. We're going to come back after next week. We're even giving a date. And I was like, okay, cool. Not knowing that that was going to be our last offline class. For like two sessions, yeah. Then we went back home. I was even very, very happy because I can remember me being tired that day. It was actually a Saturday. I went to school till like 3 p.m. And I was like, I'm really tired. I want to go home and sleep. I think tomorrow is break. And Monday is going to be break as well. On Tuesday, I'm not going to come to school. I was very, very excited. And then I went back home. And, you know, fast forward to lockdown. Lockdown was a crazy moment for me. It was a crazy experience. I experienced something that I've never experienced in my life. So I actually thought I knew myself. Like, I thought... I actually knew myself. I actually knew the kind of person I, I am. I knew things that I want. Not knowing that. I only knew the surface of myself. You know your book. You have a cover. And then inside you have leaflets of the book. And then you have another cover. So I knew both covers. Like first one and the second one. I didn't even know what was actually inside the book. And my life just turned around. And I'm like what is happening? It got to a point where I sat myself down. I was like what is happening to me? Like am I going crazy? Is this the kind of person I am? Or is it that I never even gave attention to myself because I was so carried away doing my things, running my normal activities, going to school, coming back, you know, sleeping, waking up, studying and just talking to my friends and stuff because I had not even started creating content then. So I didn't even have any online family and I don't usually like post on Instagram like that. I just had an account once in a while post you get. And then that was when it hits me hard that I needed to go on a self-discovery journey i started my self-discovery without even knowing that that was what i was actually doing first of all i've actually not been in my personal space for that long i've not experienced the peace the boredom and how overwhelming it could be so that time i was there i'm like but i have time then why am i feeling like this that was when i decided and i started even unconsciously that okay this is how i am this is how i react to things and this is how i was meant to react to them this is what i want this is what i don't want and then i knew that if i could put in my mind i'm um, an unstoppable you know human being i knew that i was somebody that if i put my mind to something i'll do it but i've never doubted myself until covid like i've never in my life doubted any of my capabilities until covid that was when i started crucifying myself i was i was telling myself that 
this thing you've been doing is wrong this is how you're supposed to do it and this is how you were supposed to react to things these are things that you know how to do these are your best things these are things that you can actually start doing and that was when it all started like everything just started and my eyes opened so i learned a lot of things which i've written in my notes i'm going to list them and then i'm going to talk about them and like give you guys the tea the first one is the world can stop at any moment if allow wills he will just say kun for your kun and that is it be and it will be you get me like we were at a point where all of us were just living we were breathing we were eating we were waking up we were sleeping our sleeping schedule was just fucked up like we did not even have a schedule it was just as if we didn't have a plan for our lives and that's what i say it is ishara like it is a sign that there is a supreme being that actually exists there's something there's somebody very divine and there's very somebody that is supernatural that actually exists because everything belongs to allah those things that you thought you had power over like you had you were thinking that you had power over your time you did not have power over your time that was when the translation and the definition of surat al-asr like the first verse well asr allah swore by time and he showed us what he could do with time we were thinking that we had time but we did not have time we had time and we did not have time because you are at home you cannot do anything you cannot actually achieve anything in a day a lot of people you know their life stopped they didn't have jobs they didn't even have anything to like feed their family to even feed themselves even if they had something to feed themselves how are they going to feed themselves you know that was when it hits me hard that Allah is actually like I knew that he was great but that was when it hits me hard that he's the greatest of all being in this world because the world stopped and if he if he decides that today there's going to be nobody in this world the world is going to perish it is going to perish because it took one it is just one mystery like one mysterious disease or infection that came and it scared the world everybody was cared for their lives everybody knew the importance of life people knew that okay we can actually die at any time but nobody wanted to die people were scared like okay this is my life my life is very precious to me that's when if anybody coughs the way you even look at that person like why are you coughing beside me do you get me even if it's your sister or your brother or anybody from your family that coughs at that point you are protecting your life like you want your life like, i don't want to go and if Allah had decided that the world was going to perish, the day all the world, like all of the worldwide went on lockdown, will not be existing now. Your loved ones are actually closed yet. I remember us telling my daddy that we were actually going to book our flights in Nigeria. And I spoke to somebody and we were, we were literally like asking about how much we we're going to play, pay for the flight. We we're going home because my daddy was like, okay, we should book our flight and come home since I think we finished the exam or our results were declared with the ones that we've, we've already done in, in school because we've already done all the exams. So it was just remaining the final exam for the semester. And we told him, it was like, okay, you guys should ask about it and then we are going to book the flight. And I spoke to somebody regarding the tickets. Yeah, I spoke to her and she was like, okay, this is the amount. I even told him and he sent the money. And the day I was about to book the flight, my younger sister was like, we should be sure that we can actually leave India and come back when school resumes before we go. And a day two, I think I was supposed to book yesterday. A day to, a day to the day that the, it gov the government was going to declare total lockdown was the day I was meant to book the flight. So my sister was like, let's delay it and ask around. And then we were asking and we were told that there's, it's likely that we're going on total lockdown. I was like, if it is total lockdown, if it is next week, we can actually fly tomorrow and go home so that the lockdown will share meet us in Nigeria. And then I woke up to the news and it was total lockdown. I'm like, 
we are this close to going home. All of my siblings were excited that we were coming home. I remember my brothers calling me and calling us and asking us, oh, when is our flight? When are we coming? Because daddy said we are coming home, blah, blah, blah. And then the news that we gave them was we are on lockdown. We can't leave. You cannot leave and you cannot come into India. And that was when it hit me that you can have all the money in this world. You can have everything. Like you're ready. Your boxes are ready. Everything is ready but you can't leave you can't do anything like you cannot go you have to stay you don't have a choice so that's how i felt like my loved ones are actually close to me yet far because i'd already planned how i'm going to see them how excited they are going to be for me coming back home and i couldn't go i couldn't just go your mental health is actually very important. That was when I, I knew that your mental health is something that you should actually consider one of the pillars of your life. Because, you know, I didn't know. I knew that mental health, you know, existed. But I actually didn't. It wasn't that deep. It was just in the surface that, okay, I knew that it existed. Because my mind has actually been very, very sound. I don't have, I overthink like I'm, I, I'm an overthinker. And I overthink to the extent that it worries me. But it doesn't drive me crazy. Like, I don't overthink to the extent that, okay, it's a do or die affair. I get worried. And when I tell somebody about it, when I speak about it, I, like, feel better. When somebody is just telling me, it is not yet time. It, if it is time, it's going to happen. Like, I just come to terms with that. Okay, let me just let it go for a bit. But it was during COVID that it hit me hard that, man, you can be smiling and you will be going through a lot because I went through a lot during COVID. My mind was just there. It was heavy. I had a lot of things I wanted to communicate about. I didn't even know how to communicate them to myself. That was when I think I found journaling. Then I started journaling. I'll write how I feel the day to day. This is how I feel. Even if it is a line, I'll just write something. And I started feeling better. And then that was when I knew that depression is actually a big deal. And it is actually, actually real. I knew but it was not that deep. It was actually real. Like people can go through a lot of things. And I think the reason why I felt like that was because the world has stopped. I've been... I've been busy since when they gave back to me. I've been going to kindergarten. I went to primary school. I went to secondary school, boarding school. Like, see how busy my life was. And before I even came to India, I went to universities in Nigeria. And I finally came here. I never stopped to do anything. Even before I got admission, like, there was something I was doing. I was going to learn fashion designing and stuff. I did not at any point in my life stop doing anything. And then when I stopped, it got to my head that... I have a lot of things I want to do. I cannot go outside and do them. And then I started thinking. And, you know, the thinking was not even as it was thinking. It was from being, from worrying to being sad to being depressed today and being okay tomorrow. And this feeling of darkness, I'm like, what is this? What is all this? feeling of darkness like inside me i'm dark but my mind is my my heart is not dark and then you know that's when i knew that okay you need to like have mental stability to be actually to to be able to actually function well in your life and that was when i started like giving myself TED talks i used to talk to myself before but it was not that deep i started like okay everything is gonna be fine and stuff and then I just said, concentrate on your mind. What does your mind want at this time? And just try and regulate the way you feel and regulate the way you think. And thank God for COVID. And then it taught me that nobody actually matters. It is only Allah. Like oh, after Allah is Allah. Because you, you don't, have, you don't matter. You don't, you cannot do anything. Doctors were researching. Researchers were researching. People were looking for the, the antidote to this mysterious infection. Nobody could find it. There was no vaccine at the time. It was just by the will of Allah that we were living. Because there was a time that our food stuff actually wanted to finish. And they were like, they are going to open up for one day. And then we're going to get food stuff. People were, they even separated like, I think this market will open today. This one will open tomorrow because they didn't even want people to be jam-packed and will go and buy food stuff. Normally, you just stand up and go to the market and get whatever you want to get. And that was when we realized that we could actually shop online. And everything, the shopping online and the person bringing about the idea of shopping online was by the will of Allah because if he did not will it, we were going to starve. And all of us are going to starve and just die. Just like that. And then we started like, online you know online shopping they will buy you buy grocery you just pay online and somebody will come and drop it by your door that was when we knew that this thing could could happen and it just it just dawned on me that 
after Allah is Allah. We are living by his will. We are able to function by his will. We are just able to do anything by his will. And that was when I started to actually connect a lot and well with him because I remember me watching a lot of videos just falling in love with the existence of Allah, falling, falling in love like with the way he does his things, falling in love with his entire existence and our own existence and i'm like covid is actually a sign from god that i exist you know like it is just a sign that i exist nobody is me it is me against you people not you people against me or how will i even put the english and alhamdulillah it was during covid that i actually found modesty i had already started wearing hijab before i will start and then i'll stop you know this peer pressure peer, peer pressure and then seeing my sisters like dress you see yes people used to influence me in a bad way before as i've said it and i just be like me too i want to be like that and you know i <laughs> my friends and then i i didn't even have a mind of my own to say that okay this is what i want and i'm actually going to stick with it and covid came i did my research about hijab again and i'm like i love this thing like i love it and it, it's just peaceful for you to be covered and somebody is going to automatically respect you and you know recognize you as the muslim that you are you don't even need to explain that i'm a muslim it's just like your identity something that you, you're supposed to be proud of and i found hijab and i remember me calling my mom and telling her to send me some money i want to buy hijab and then to them that was in 2020 yeah 2020 we're still in lockdown and that time market was still open in small small so when the market opens i'll just go and buy the material and i'll come and sew and i started wearing it i was i'm very like i was very very happy and i'm very grateful that covid actually happened and i'm very grateful for my family's support my family supported me they are still supporting me and you know the way my dad like finds my my style very unique and i just everything is just beautiful to be honest the way my mom my sisters my brother every, everybody my friends like they you know support me my sister telling me my elder sister telling me if this is what you want i'm going to pray for you just make sure that you stay on it and looking at and looking at my niece and looking at my cousins and looking at my cousins you know wanting to be like me me being there their role model is actually getting me emotional and we don't cry here we're big girls and you know it's just beautiful that's when i i knew that okay if allah wants to guide you he's going to guide you in a very surprising way because in nigeria that i'm allowed to even wear hijab like normally i wear my hijab and just be slaying i did not start wearing hijab fully in nigeria it is when i came to where there's you know islamophobia and i'm not allowed to like move freely with my hijab it can be dangerous at any time anything can happen to me and you know that's when i found modest that's when i find hijab like that's actually beautiful it is all by the will and by the existence of allah that everything has happened and another thing i'm grateful for covid for is the fact that i actually found youtube before i know that youtube was there because i had people that i was watching i used to watch dima ome i used to watch kelechi Bemena. those were the only two people i did jackie aina those are like the three people i used to watch on youtube before i just go on youtube i was just gonna see them i'm not even listening to whatever they are saying i just want to see their faces and i want to see them on screen and that was when i was like oh i want to do this youtube thing and that was when i knew that okay my cre my creativity is unlimited i can actually do anything i want to do and right from time I, i've actually been a very creative person and i've actually had this um, vision of me talking to people and people are going to listen to me but i never even knew how i was going to do that and covid came i was like youtube thinking about youtube i'm like is this where i'm supposed to talk because when i started my makeup content that was when before i started wearing hijab and after i made inquiries it was not something that was encouraged it's high it's very very discouraging islam and i'm like okay i'm giving it up but what i can what can i do on my youtube i want to talk how do i start talking and i'm actually i was actually somebody that is very very that was very very cam camera shy like you know me well like i'm very camera shy. i was very camera shy and then finding the confidence to like talk to the camera the first day i even spoke to camera it was very funny to me i'm like i'm talking to this thing that is not human and <laughs> how am i going to go about it you know and it was really funny 
And I found that, okay, when I changed my niche, people actually liked me. So I started go- getting f- some bad comments and stuff. And thank God for YouTube. They blocked it. I'm the only one that can get to see it and I can block that person. And then I started doing that. I addressed it once. And my style was like, people that are meant to be great are going to be insulted. So just take it as your own way of becoming a great person. And I started YouTube. I found you people and I'm so grateful for you people because a lot of you here, I don't even know, you know, physically, but you guys follow me. You guys listen to me. Jazakumullah khairan for that. I love you all for the sake of Allah. I can't even lie. And I'm very, very grateful to you guys. It's just the experience with COVID is, is really beautiful. If I want to keep on talking, I'll talk and, talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk till tomorrow. But I'm excited that I had this episode and I hope that you guys are also excited about this episode because it is really important to me. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Make sure that you don't go anywhere. Make sure that you stay here and make sure that you know just connect with me. Follow me on my Instagram to be a part of our conversation next week. And I'll see you guys in the next one.